Hi, this is David Davis from Actual Tech Media, and I'm here with Jeremy Brown from Thinware. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm good, David. How are you? Great. So tell us what Thinware is and what you all offer your customers. Well, we are a technology solutions provider, and we specialize in virtualization technologies. Um, <clears throat> kind of our claim to fame is we, we uh, like to take the, the least expensive solutions out there and do the most with them. Okay. So the, the primary flagship product that you all offer is vBackup. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, what I've learned about vBackup is that uh, it, it provides simplicity, affordability, and, and functionality to small companies. Um, and it, it, it's out there in a, a kind of a sea of these loud, you know, maybe advanced and expensive data protection products. Um, so tell us what vBackup, you know, does. You, you designed it to be simple and affordable and functional. Um, how does it help the, the, your customers? Well, <clears throat> you're right. What we did is we, we tried to take a different look at, at backup, um, specifically virtualization backup, because that's a, that's a great technology in and of itself. Yeah. The ability to take a, a full machine um, and back it up at, at, at its particular file base level and, and, and restore it um, very easily. <clears throat> so, um, so what we wanted to do is, is we took a look at, the, at the, the technologies that are out there and we determined which ones were absolute must-haves and which ones we could probably do without if we were a system admin. Right, yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the, the Microsoft Office suite. You know, so many companies, they buy the, you know, $700 or whatever it is per user Microsoft Office suite with all of these applications and all these advanced features. But really, it's like the 90-10 rule where they only use 10% of the features. They only open Word and create a document, spell check, and print it out or whatever it might be. 90% of the stuff they just never use, and, and they're paying for that, you know, unfortunately. Um, is that kind of the, the thing that the same scenario is the same yeah. scenario with vBackup? Yeah, so the, the basic premise behind backup is you, we want to back up our data right? and we want to be able to restore it. Yeah. Okay, so we start there Yeah. and then we look at the features that make the backup administrator's job easier and, and try to limit those as much as we can so that we can stick with, you know, our, our uh, ability to be affordable and, and simple interface and Right. So on. Right. So um, you work with VMware vSphere. We do. And you even work with free ESXi. Yes. Which is a very uh, hard to find any tool out there. Uh, you, you all might be the only one that, I don't know, that works with free ESXi. So it's, it's hard to find a tool that works with free ESXi. Um, and so you've got these companies that you're using free ESXi, obviously to save money mm -hmm. uh, is the primary use case there. Um, but still gain, you know, virtualization backup efficiency where they can run multiple VMs, they can back them up, and they can restore them. So that's the functionality you provide. You, you can back up VMs, you can restore the VMs, and, and what else? Do it on a schedule, I assume? It, yes, yep, fully scheduled. Okay. Um, you can restore full VMs. You can restore single folders or files. Um, you can uh, run the backup directly from the backup server. So if you have a complete mm. host crash, you can... You can mount your virtual machines and run them um, in, a, in, a, in, the, in production just right there on the backup server until you can restore your host. That's and, actually an advanced feature that many of the backup companies tout. Right. So you've got that built in. Um, notification, what, what other? Yeah. So uh, email notification, um, full event viewer, you know, Windows log yeah. um, uh, notification. Yeah, very nice. And one of the big backup vendors might say, well, what about all these other, you know, 47 features? Uh, but in most cases, companies don't need that. And, and here with vBackup, they don't have to pay for it either. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, and we find that, that, uh, that it's not always just small businesses, but it's a lot of uh, robo implementations or remote office, uh, branch office, uh, or maybe a large enterprise company that has a one-off solution uh, or a temporary solution that they have in place that they don't need to they don't want to go out and acquire a different license you know additional licenses for this one server or this six month project yeah. so that's where we fit in very nice excellent excellent well do you want to give us um a little bit about what's um 
what are some of the new features that have been released in the last year with sure. VBackup? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so another thing with VBackup is we took a very long uh, beta, uh, five years, and, um, and, and we did that because, you know, we're, we're at, as we're going back to determining what it is that our admins absolutely have to have, we wanted to hear from them. So, on, uh, you know, the first time we had just a simple working model, we put it out on our website and allowed it uh, for free download and, and uh, beta license. And, and then we just sat and waited and listened. And as our users came to us and said, hey, can you make it do this? Or, hey, I really need that. We built those features in. And over the course of five years, we built a product that was designed by our users. That's great. That's a, a really good story. And that's the best way to build a product, too. Right. I like that. So what are some of the new features that you foresee coming out with in the future? Um, well, we are, uh, we're currently working on uh, differential backup. And this is mostly for space savings. Mm -hmm. Um, because, uh, you know, we, right now we currently do full backups only and compressed full backups. And, um, so, you know, we need to, we're moving more into looking at things that we can save and cut down on. So we're going to eat, although backup storage is cheap, yeah. um, we want to, uh, we want to be able to, to move, uh, those backups for offsite replication. So, right. so in tandem with differential backup. Uh, that'll be coming out in the next release. We have uh, off-site mirroring nice. um, and uh, <clears throat> VM replication. So replicating VMs from one host to another uh, as a part of the backup process. And, uh, and then we have a really new feature we're excited about, and that is um, it's centralized management. So right now the core and the proxy piece are all built and run on the same backup server. So we've separated the proxy into a Linux-based appliance that can be installed anywhere. So for, for remote, remote office, branch office implementations, you can install this really small Linux-based proxy at, at, on the network where the, your, your host servers are, and it handles the local data moves, and then you can still manage everything centrally. Very nice, very nice. Nice advanced features coming out soon, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of you know very useful, essential you know features already baked into the product. And again, these all these ideas came from our customers, so <laughs> we we can't claim ownership to the idea, but we'll go do it. Excellent, excellent. So you want to give us a little bit of demo here on VBackup? Sure. <clears throat> so this is the main management interface. We call this the VBackup client. Um, and uh, here's where you would manage all of your the inventory of your of your uh, virtual machines and your backups and and all of your job configurations and so on. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just show you how simple it is to add a host and back up a machine, and then if we have time, we'll do a restore. Excellent. So we're going to go to the add host wizard. Um, you can type in IP address or DNS name, either one, doesn't matter. Username and password to uh, connect to that host server. We need to license it, so let's just go with our advanced license. That's the the least expensive. And now we're going to, since we didn't auto discover the VMs there, um, we're just going to quickly add a virtual machine to this host server that we want to back up. Okay. So we'll click on add virtual machine. So it's a simple Windows tool you install on the backup server. That's right. And then connect it to your ESXi hosts and find out the inventory of your VMs and then you're going to show us how to create a backup job. Sure. So, uh, so I've added this virtual machine. I'm going to click add job. Give the job a name. We could just call it job one for now. And we have to choose a backup type and communication protocol. Okay. So since, since this is the free version of ESXi that we're, that we're dealing with, we're going to choose SSH. 
give it some basic settings. Um, let's just back up to the temp folder on the C drive. Um, we can uh, we can do disk exclusion. So let's say you have a, a SQL Server, and Monday through Friday you want to only back up the the disk that contains your database files, and then once a week you want to back up the OS drive as well. So that's what would allow you to do this. You just hit exclude disks and and choose the disks that you want to exclude. Okay. We tell it the number of backups to keep. Um, we we support full quiescing of the guest file system, so that works with VMware tools and and uh, VSS. So uh, for applications like uh, Exchange or, or SQL Server, um, that will quiet all of the writes that need to go to disk before before the backup uh, before the backup snapshot is committed. Yeah, so that's application consistent backup. That's right. And that's one of the advanced features that many of the the big vendors tout. You yeah. have built into your product. Yeah, yeah, um, and you can turn that off. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're, you know, if you have problems with, you know, VSS errors or things like that, there's another way you can get an application consistent uh, backup, and that's simply by snapshotting the virtual machine's memory. That essentially does the same thing. It stuns the VM enough that we can get a good consistent snapshot that we can back up. But we don't recommend that, of course. It takes a little more time. Mm -hmm. uh, this is always the best. All right, so we are going to choose a compression level. Um, basic is fine. What basic does is it removes the white space from the disk. So okay. if you have a 100 gig disk with 20 gigs of data, you're going to get a 20 gig backup. Okay. Uh, if we did choose advanced here, it would, uh, in addition to that, it would also run a compression algorithm on the remaining 20. 20 gigs and compress that even further. Okay. And that's to save you space um, on the data that you're transferring from the ESXi host? That's right. Back yeah, to the backup server? That's inline compression. Inline compression. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. So that job is done, ready, built. It only takes a few seconds. Um, and now we're just going to execute it. I'll choose after here so we can watch the console window and see all of the messages as we go along. All right, so we kicked off a backup of our virtual machine on an ESXi host. And we'll just give it a second to complete here. All right, so we'll hit in the key to continue. We see that we got it completed successfully um, for the result. And now we can come and we can look at our backups list. And um, we got an 89% compression ratio, so that's good. Um, and a lot of things, a lot of neat things we can do here is we can mount this disk and we'll choose we're going to mount it to the Z drive. And we could install or we could, uh, we could recover just a single folder or a single file. Oh, so you have file level restore as well. That's right. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So we'll unmount that. All right, so now that we've unmounted the, the disk, um, let's say that this virtual machine crashes or that host server, this host, maybe this uh, .71 host crashes and we need to restore this virtual machine. So it's as simple as uh, going to restore. It's, everything is wizard based, so it's a simple walkthrough. So we'll give the virtual machine a name and then we'll just leave the default name here. Basically it appended the the backup date and time to the virtual machine name. Okay. That way you could restore it to the same host just for testing if you wanted to. Right. So we'll choose the host server that we're going to restore it to. All right, so now it's connecting to the host and uh, we're going to we're going to get a list of data stores with updated storage information. So that way we can we can choose the best data store to restore the VM to. Great. So we'll select so, our data store. Yeah, maybe we'll put this on uh, data store one. We get some options here. So we definitely want to preserve the network adapters in this case because we've lost the VM completely. Um, we uh, we uh, want to set the network adapters to start at connect. Okay. 
But if you were just doing a test, you could. You could, yeah, you could set those. them to, to not start as connected. And then right. maybe you could connect the VM to a different network and bring it up and, and do testing. Right. Um, we can choose whether we want thick or thin provisioning for our disks, for each one of our disks. Okay. Uh, we can even restore the VM but not register it in the host. So maybe you just want to put the, 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 the uh, VM files over there, maybe for a later restore or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we could set the VM to always maintain identity. Um, <clears throat> and that's, uh, you know, if, if you're in a, in a crunch and you need the VM to come up quickly uh, and you don't want to have to deal with the prompt of, well, you know, what happened to the VM, I moved it, I copied it, you oh, check okay. this. Gotcha. And, and, and then we'll take its identity with it. Yeah. So you can restore <clears throat> a thickly provisioned VM as a thin provisioned VM and vice versa. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's really it. So now we're just going to click Restore. Review the warning, of course. <clears throat> and let the restore run. Okay, so this, this restore is complete. It's prepared, prepared as a summary. So we can see all of the steps it completed and, and uh, we can know for sure that the virtual machine was completed successfully. And now, since this new VM is out in production, let's go ahead and add it to vBackup. Yeah, I like that you're prompted to do that. Okay, here's our new VM. Excellent. So we did a backup of a VM and we did a restore, restore or recovery of a VM uh, and we did it all here from this same interface uh, in just a few clicks, really. Really, yeah. And now let's say um, we need to get a backup job configured for this VM. It needs to be just like it was before. So let's just copy this backup job. And let's just paste it here and now we're done. Very nice. So we've protected this virtual machine in the future as well. That's right. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Jeremy. Thank you. And thanks for your excellent demo of Thinware's V Backup. Yes.